Hello everyone, it is a concerned Dr. Miskoff. It is April 17th, 2020, about 8 p.m. And I'm vlogging from my kitchen again here in Toms River, New Jersey after another long week uh, fighting COVID-19. I have a day off tomorrow, uh, still standing, if you will. Uh, tonight, I'd like to talk about the hottest uh, topic uh, in the news as of the last 24 hours, and that's remdesivir, a product made by uh, Gilead Sciences. And the fact of the night is that Remdesivir is, in fact, a uh, antiviral developed by Gilead, and it's being studied for COVID-19 in 2020. Um, so the article or the report actually came out from Stat News, and it seems like it was probably leaked. It was a video uh, of colleagues talking about uh, the, the study that's going on at the University of Chicago, and there's a number of studies throughout the world uh, with remdesivir currently, both for severe COVID-19 and for moderate disease. Um, even uh, uh, our hospital is involved at least in, in, in at least one of those trials, although we haven't been able to get, um, like some of the major centers, a daily, if you will, infusion of remdesivir for 10 days. Um, and the University of Chicago uh, was at least, uh, you know, it was reported and that there was a video about a conversation uh, from uh, Kathleen Mullane, uh, the lead, I guess, investigator or PI for the site, uh, for the study um, that, in fact, uh, you know, patients with severe respiratory symptoms and fever uh, that were treated with remdesivir, I think there was 113 that were severe, considered severe, and several more um, uh, beyond that that maybe weren't as severe, uh, maybe not on respirators, but only two of those patients had perished, and as she was quoted as saying, most had been discharged. And it sounds like uh, they were being discharged at a relatively quick um, time frame uh, within a week or so. Now, this was a video. It was not an authorized leak. The University of Chicago said that. Uh, they also said that it was partial data, again, unauthorized. And they cautioned about the conclusions because there are no conclusions yet. It's anecdote from that scientist, uh, that physician that was, that was, again, on video discussing it with her colleagues. And uh, I'm not exactly sure that that was in intended by her uh, to be released. I, I doubt it was, uh, but nonetheless, Stat News reported it. And of course, Gilead stock after hours shot up um, because, you know, if 113 severe patients and only two died, uh, that's a very good statistic from what we're hearing. Remember the Washington University, those nine hospitals or so uh, in Washington state um, had a 50% death rate on their ventilator patients. Of course, that was early on they uh, were not uh, giving remdesivir as a 10-day infusion, at least as far as I know. Um, so there is promise here, and, it, and it, it, you know, remdesivir, that end, uh, ezivir or VIR, remember with um, uh, influenza, we have omstalmavir, uh, and there's other uh, antivirals with uh, similar properties being studied also. Um, the NIH has studied uh, COVID-19 in rhesus monkeys, and what they did is they took 12 monkeys, six they gave a fake or a placebo to, and the other six, they gave remdesivir. They injected all the uh, uh, monkeys with, in fact, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Um, and what they found was that uh, about 12 hours later, they gave them the remdesivir in the, in the group that uh, received the treatment, and the placebo was equal at the same time. And, and they gave it for an additional six days, and they found that only one out of six monkeys that got remdesivir actually had just mild uh, breathing difficulties where all six of the six uh, monkeys that got placebo received placebo um, had difficulty breathing. They didn't, I didn't, I couldn't find if there was a death rate there, but what they did, I'm not sure if any of them died, but uh, they did note that six out of six who got the fake had uh, significant breathing difficulties and only one out of six uh, who received remdesivir had mild. So that's promising as well. They did, however, note that viral shedding was the same in both groups, so it didn't seem to affect the infectious uh, capabilities of, of, of that, uh, of the monkey. Um, remember that remdesivir was originally studied and uh, brought about for Ebola and it had very little success. Uh, there have been multiple animal studies with uh, SARS-1 and, and the Middle Eastern uh, respiratory uh, MERS, uh, uh, you know, and they actually did show promise uh, with those, at least in the animal studies. Um, again, this is a 10-day treatment although uh, the um, video from the University of Chicago, uh, she had said that you know, most had been discharged by day six, I think, or day seven, uh, so that, quote, there wouldn't be necessarily a need for 10 days, again, not to draw conclusions. There was no placebo arm in that study, 
and we are waiting to hear uh, from the rest of the centers that we're looking at this. Um, uh, Gilead uh, has 2,400 being studied right now uh, uh, with severe disease. Again, severe, they're hypoxemic, they, they require oxygen, uh, they may be on a respirator, um, they're clearly COVID positive, and they're, uh, they have you know, bilateral or at least um, uh, uh, abnormalities on their X-ray or CAT scan uh, suggesting pneumonia. 152 sites uh, are involved in that trial. Uh, there's another uh, trial going on with moderate, uh, or if you will, a little bit earlier on, or when they're not maybe in uh, overt respiratory failure or ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and 169 sites are involved in that study with 1,600. Results of that study are spe uh, expected by the end of the month. Um, again, this is only anecdote information. Uh, we don't know uh, without a placebo-controlled um, human study, which again, they are doing right now, and there's several of those studies going on internationally, whether or not remdesivir is in fact the golden uh, bullet or silver bullet. Uh, but think about, again, that original Washington University experience with 50% of the patients on ventilators dying. There's been numbers in New York City reported at 80% of those going on respirators, up to 80% uh, uh, perishing from the disorder. So if, if in fact 113, um, only two died, and again, I'm not sure if all those were on respirators or how many were on respirators versus alternative respiratory support or high flow, what we call OptiFlow. Uh, at University of Chicago, they also have this sort of hyperbaric helmet that, that, that completely encases uh, sort of airtight and blows the oxygen in a, in a high pressure situation. And they've utilized that um, for um, potentially uh, avoiding intubation or going on respirators. So there may be other variables as well in the patient's care that we're not uh, controlled for. There could be bias when it's a placebo, uh, when it, there's not a placebo involved, uh, that the uh, investigator might actually select uh, certain patients based on what they feel is the need to give to, um, as opposed to uh, them getting a random agent. So there could be some selection bias, or likely is some selection bias, but nonetheless, if only two out of 113 died, and that's one experience, that's a darn good experience so far, and, and, and some evidence at least, that this may in fact be the first approved um, you know, FDA approved agent for uh, COVID-19. And if I was, you know, a betting man, which I'm not, uh, that's, uh, that, that's who I would put my money on right now. Um, again, time will tell. Uh, I think, you know, if the results are really that good and other centers are reporting similar, and we do have information by the end of the month or early into uh, May, uh, that uh, there's a very good probability that, you know, a placebo trial may even be stopped. Um, and, and because it, when, when the control, um, when the uh, uh, treatment arm is doing that much better than the placebo uh, and they look at that data interim, uh, the study, uh, it, it is very possible or even probable that the FDA may stop the study and give an approval immediately. Now, remember, this is an IV infusion. It's not like taking Tamiflu. Uh, hopefully, they can come up with similar agents uh, that are in pill form. Uh, or otherwise, you'd have to be, you know, coming into an infusion center, or an emergency room, or a hospitalization in order to get it. But if the data is that good, uh, it'll certainly be worth it. And this is a game changer. Um, it's quite amazing how quickly the medical and science fields have ramped up. Granted that they've had experience with SARS, MERS, other coronaviruses being studied. Um, we know that the um, vaccine trials are, move, are moving along fast. Uh, but the hope here is, is that we'll have a remdesivir or similar agent um, very quickly, very soon, hopefully within the next couple months, fast track through the FDA so that we can save the majority of the severe patients, which is definitely a game changer, and then have the backup of tozolizumabs and cerilimabs and the anti-IL-6s or anti-IL-1s or other cytokine storm busters on top of convalescent plasma, and I know there are patients already in the system that are getting convalescent plasma in New Jersey and other states. Most states uh, have ramped up and have started giving plasma. Um, again, uh, you know, uh, this is to try and neutralize the virus, and we've spoken about it um, with already some anecdote coming out uh, throughout the world uh, that it is helpful. So if we can get them remdesivir early and those few that it was a little bit too late, get sicker and we can give them anti-IL-6s followed by convalescent plasma or whichever order it should be. Um, once the data is complete, uh, then that would be a nice bridge to vaccine and preventative um, uh, for this disease. 
So uh, everybody, um, again, I don't want to promise anything, but it is promising at least what we're hearing so far. And stay tuned for Remdesivir by Gilead. Um, it does sound very promising. Have a great night. Everybody uh, stay well, and we'll see you again.